In our first video, did we unpack the basics of deciding to insure or self-insure, which was predominantly motor-related. We will now give you a practical example of how you should go about assessing your all-risk items when deciding to insure or self-insure. So the first thing you might do, and using an example of you having bought your better off an expensive piece of jewelry of let's say 20,000 Rand, you phone up your insurance company and they say it will cost you 100 Rand per month to insure said item. So that basically means that you will have to save up 100 Rand for a period of 16.67 years before having saved up enough money to replace the item. So already you have a critical decision to make. But before you do so, let's go one step further. None of us are the same, and your risk is unique to only you. Now you know your life partner, so you need to now assess the risk. The item first and foremost, say we are talking about a smartphone. The likelihood of accidental and or theft occurring to said item is pretty high, right? Even more so if your life partner has little hand-eye coordination. An 18 karat gold ring on the other hand would not attract such a high accidental risk and potentially a lower theft risk purely due to it being on your person most of the time. The point of this is to analyze everything that could potentially go wrong with the item from an accidental right through to a theft cushion. How often will you or she be carrying the item on their person is also something to be considered. The more often, the more exposure the item would be at, right? Now, if this is something the individual will be wearing every day, then it might already warrant the premium from a frequency and risk exposure perspective. Then ask yourself what your partner's individual risk exposure is. If you or she is a traveling sales executive that frequently moves into high risk areas, then it might be a good idea to transfer that risk onto an insurance company. The point we are trying to make is this. There is a difference in self-insuring versus uninsured. Uninsured means you don't have the financial means to take up insurance. Self-insure means you elect to take the risk on yourself and have the means of replacing an item following a loss. So I wanna share a simple example that me and my family uses. One of the most expensive items we own these days are our mobile phones. These are high risk items and therefore will you most likely be confronted with a premium you didn't expect. Most of us take these mobile devices on contracts. Now something we have done as a family is keep the item on insurance until we upgrade our phones. We would then keep the old version of the phones in the safe as backups. We then accept the risk that should something happen to the new phone, will we have to live with the older model again until the upgrade is due. So this is one way my family manages the risks and saves money on a monthly basis on our insurance premiums. But again, understand the risk, agree on what the ifs are, and what will happen if that event happens. And most importantly, get agreement with all family members. Self-insuring requires appropriate risk management. And then more importantly, self-discipline in keeping funds to the side for potential future losses. We trust our practical examples as equipped you in making an informed decision when considering self-insuring items. Thanks for joining us.